12 of the most incredible discoveries by archaeologists that shocked the world. The grave of a real zombie, a mysterious ritual during the overthrow of the government, giant traces of the ancient gods, revelation of the secrets of a famous manuscript, who built the magician's pyramid and how to receive a message from the afterlife. This video will shock you. Hi friend, you are on the Kurtop channel. Zombie Grave in a recently discovered burial site near Oppen in Saxony-Anhalt, Germany, archaeologists have discovered astonishing Bronze Age artifacts linked to ancient superstitions. The remains of a man were found in the grave, laid on his side with his legs pressed under a heavy stone about a meter long and 50 centimeters wide. Thus, those who were involved in his burial tried to prevent his return to the world of the living. According to excavation director Uwe Moose, the man, between 40 and 60 years old, was positioned facing east, indicating cultural rituals of the time. Moose suggests that the deceased either suffered from a serious illness or was not respected among his own people. It is argued that the man may have been part of the bell beaker culture, which is characterized by a certain style of pottery. In those distant times, people sincerely believed in the existence of revenants, the dead striving to return to the world of the living. The means of dealing with them were varied, from piercing the bodies with spears to placing heavy stones on the bodies to prevent them from rising from the dead. Underground City The Umm Jirsin Cave, located in Saudi Arabia, is an important archaeological site demonstrating the important role of lava tubes in the lives of our ancestors. This one-and-a-half-kilometer lava tunnel, which arose as a result of volcanic activity, served as a refuge for people for 7,000 years. An international team of archaeologists has discovered numerous objects here that tell about the life of the ancients. Fragments of clothing, processed wood, remains of stone buildings and tools presumably used for household purposes were found. Archaeologists also came across animal bones, which could be either food waste or part of burials. A study of the remains shows that the diet of the cave inhabitants was rich in protein, but over time the proportion of plant food from nearby oases increased. The caves were also used by pastoralists as temporary shelter during transitions between oases, facilitating trade. This hypothesis is confirmed by rock paintings depicting livestock. Secret Sect Horoscope A mysterious scroll called Horoscope was found in the Judean Desert. It refers to ancient texts associated with the secret teachings of the mysterious Children of Light sect. This unique manuscript has attracted the attention of scientists for its contents, which touch on astrology and elements of mysticism that were practiced thousands of years ago. The scroll is written in Hebrew, but there are symbols in Greek, Aramaic, and Hebrew. A peculiarity of the text is that it is written in reverse order, from right to left, which indicates its special significance for the sect. Dr. Oren Abelman, an expert on the Judean Desert Scrolls, suggests that the text may have been used as instructions to the sect's senior leadership. Horoscope includes a unique belief system that states that a person's date of birth influences their zodiac sign, characteristics in the balance between light and darkness in the soul. According to the scroll, each day of the year is associated with a certain degree of light or darkness, which in turn affects a person's inherent qualities of good or evil. The text also mentions a strict initiation process for new members of the Children of Light sect. The scroll was used to create individual horoscopes where the date of birth determined the personality and physical characteristics of the candidate. This process, according to Dr. Abelman, was not just a ritual but a test of the candidate's ability to fully accept the teachings and customs of the sect. Ritual During a Change of Power Archaeological excavations at the site of Ucanal in northern Guatemala have uncovered traces of an ancient ritual that may have symbolized the public change of the old regime of the Mayan civilization. At the top of the pyramid temple, charred human bones and royal jewelry were found. These artifacts may indicate specific burial rites or ceremonies. The analysis showed that the bones belonged to at least four adults, with three of them identified as males. One of the skeletons was exposed to high temperatures of over 800 degrees Celsius. This research confirms that the remains found may have been members of the royal family, originally buried elsewhere and burned as part of a ritual transfer to the pyramid a century later. Among the items found were 1,500 fragments of various jewelry, pendants, beads, plates, and mosaics made of green stone, obsidian objects, blades, 10,000 beads from seashells, as well as pendants made from mammal teeth. 
Fragments of a mosaic funerary mask made of green stone were also discovered, which is typical of royal tombs of the period. Radiocarbon dating indicates that the deaths occurred approximately 100 years before the burning. This supports the theory that the burial may have been part of a ritual marking the symbolic and literal destruction of the previous dynastic line of Kanwitznal. This may have been a highly ceremonial event associated with a change in the political order of the region. Traces of the Gods in the Temple of Eindara in northern Syria, in the arid lands, there is a unique archaeological site of Ain Dara, a complex of buildings around a majestic central temple, which in its characteristics has no analogues. One of its remarkable features is the giant footprints on the threshold, which are up to one meter long, clearly indicating their non-human origin. According to local residents, the traces were left by a deity, and the temple resembles the biblical description of the Temple of Solomon temple dating from the Iron Age of the Syro-Hittite kingdoms, which arose after the collapse of the Hittite Empire around 1180 BC and existed until 700 BC, was opened in 1955. Archaeological excavations have made it possible to study its structure and decoration in more detail. The temple rises on an embankment and is surrounded by a gallery. Its foundation is made up of massive basalt blocks. The walls are decorated with intricate carvings depicting geometric patterns and mythical animals, demonstrating the great skill of its creators. The entrance is guarded by lions and sphinxes carved from stone. However, it has not yet been established to whom exactly the temple was dedicated. There is an assumption that it could be dedicated to the goddess Ishtar, but there is no exact data. Giant human footprints not only confirm the structure's connection with ancient myths and deities, but also emphasize its cultural, religious, and mystical significance. However, in 2018, a huge part of this temple was destroyed by airstrikes. Strange Long Stone in the history of archaeology, discoveries occur that are made not only by scientists but also by ordinary people, often completely unexpectedly. Michigan farmer James Bristle stumbled upon an archaeological sensation when he decided to lay a gas pipeline through his ranch. When James started digging, he did not expect any surprises since the soil here was fertile and without stones. But soon the excavator stumbled upon something. Fearing damage to his rental car, the farmer stopped and decided to inspect the obstacle with a shovel. It turned out that it was not a stone, but something smooth and hard. Digging by hand, James soon realized that there was a huge bone in front of him. He called neighbors for help, and soon several more large bones were discovered. At first, no one could say for sure which animal they belonged to. A few hours later, amateur archaeologists dug to the place where the bones were connected into one large skull with tusks. Initially, farmers assumed it was an elephant, but to be sure, they called real scientists from the University of Michigan. Professor Fisher, having arrived at the place, immediately established that these were the remains of a mammoth and in excellent condition. He wanted to take the bones for study, but James refused to give them up, citing laws that allow the landowner to dispose of the finds at his own discretion. As a result, the farmer displayed the remains in his store, attracting tourists and scientists from all over the country and additionally selling his products. Researchers have unraveled the Voynich Manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript has intrigued scientists and cryptographers for more than 600 years. This document, filled with cipher text and unusual illustrations, gives rise to many hypotheses, from magic spells to obscene texts. But researchers from Macquarie University have concluded that the contents of the manuscript are not only decent, but also contain information that was not for everyone at the beginning of the 15th century. Dr. Keegan Brewer, the study's lead author, says the manuscript is a medieval reference book on gynecology, including information on sex, contraception, and the treatment of gynecological diseases. The encrypted nature of the text suggests that access to this information was sought to be limited to a certain group of readers, women, which is a clear example of gender censorship. The manuscript contains many illustrations of plants, animals, and people, but the researcher's special attention was drawn to the drawings of naked women pointing to their genitals. These images clearly hint at the gynecological focus of the text. Women's secrets, as women's health was called in the Middle Ages, were heavily censored despite extensive study. The patriarchal culture of the era feared the female body and its functions, which was reflected in the medical texts of the time. One of the largest and most enigmatic illustrations known as rosettes may symbolize the generally accepted views on sex and contraception of the time. 
According to the ideas of that time, the uterus consisted of seven chambers and the vagina had two openings. Perhaps the nine circles in the illustration symbolize these anatomical details. Thus, the Voynich Manuscript may not be just a collection of meaningless symbols or a joke, as some have suggested, but an important historical document revealing approaches to women's health in medieval Europe. Hussar Armor in Poland Hussars, light cavalry that originated in medieval Hungary, played a key role in numerous historical battles. They were used by the Habsburgs to defend against the Ottomans and participate in European conflicts. The Polish Hussars became especially famous, participating in such battles as the Battle of Orsha in 1514 and the Siege of Vienna in 1683. Recently, in the Polish village of Mikulowice, local resident Patrick Chmielewski, using a metal detector, discovered partially preserved hussar armor. The find includes several elements, elbow pads, shoulder pads, collarbone protection, and a helmet. The armor was found at a depth of 60 centimeters, and experts believe it dates back to the early 17th century. It is interesting that the armor found is devoid of decorative elements, which is typical for military equipment ordered not by magnates, but by more modest nobles. This indicates that the armor was made in a local workshop to the individual order of a wealthy owner. The most luxurious pirate port. Port Royal, known as the worst city on earth, was once the wealthiest port in the Caribbean. This place was considered a center of luxury and debauchery, where the abundance of alcohol, gambling, and entertainment with women attracted pirates and adventurers from all over the world. However, a sudden earthquake on June 7, 1692 put an end to this splendor, when two-thirds of the city went underwater, taking with it many lives. Port Royal's history began with the Taino people, who used the area for fishing until the Spanish took control of the region. However, Port Royal's true potential was only realized after the British conquered Jamaica in 1654. They built Fort Cromwell, which was later renamed Fort Charles, and began using Port Royal as a strategic base for privateering operations under Henry Morgan. This quickly turned the city into the region's largest trading port. The disaster of 1692 was a tragic and sudden end to Port Royal's prosperity. The earthquake and subsequent tsunami destroyed most of the city in a matter of minutes, killing 1,600 people and seriously injuring another 3,000. Despite this, the city, which disappeared under the waters, remains one of the most significant archaeological sites. Since the 1950s, archaeologists have discovered many well-preserved artifacts, including everyday objects and even human remains. One of the finds, a pocket watch, made it possible to accurately establish the time of the disaster, 1143. The Witch, the Dwarf, and the Magician's Pyramid The ancient Mayan city of Uxmal, located on the Yucatan Peninsula, is a place where unique architecture and ancient mythology merge with otherworldly landscapes. One of the most mysterious structures here is the Pyramid of the Magician, a structure amazing in its shape and significance. This place is surrounded by magical legends, in particular the story of a dwarf and a witch who supposedly built the magician's pyramid. This legend exists only in oral retellings of local residents since it is not recorded in ancient texts. Variations of this story are passed down from generation to generation. The story was first recorded in the 19th century by John Lloyd Stevens, an American explorer who published his observations in a book about his travels to the Yucatan. One day he heard this story from a local resident. According to legend, in the place where the pyramid now stands, there was once the hut of an old witch who wanted to have an heir. Using magic, she created a childlike creature from the egg. This baby quickly grew to the size of an adult, but remained the size of a dwarf. The witch was proud of him and dreamed that he would become a great ruler. On her instructions, the dwarf challenged the local king to a duel. The test proposed by the king seemed impossible, but each time the dwarf coped with them using the cunning and magic of his mother. For example, the king demanded that the dwarf build a house taller than all the buildings in the city in one night. By morning, a majestic pyramid rose on the site of the old hut. The final test was that the king and the dwarf had to break wood over each other's heads. The witch prepared her son by placing a protective spell on his head. The king was unable to harm the dwarf, and he in turn took the king's life with his blow. So the dwarf became the new ruler of Uxmal. In some versions of this legend, the dwarf is the god Itzamama, who used magic to build the pyramid. These stories may have emerged as an attempt to explain the unusual shape and structure of the Pyramid of the Magician, which archaeologists believe took three centuries to build. 
church seal from the 13th century. In Suffolk, England, Paul Henderson and his 10-year-old son George went on a search expedition to the fields of Woodbridge. Arming their son with a metal detector, they did not keep themselves waiting. Within 10 minutes, the device gave a signal. At a depth of 12 centimeters, George discovered an unusual flat, oval-shaped object with pointed corners which shocked his father. This item surpassed all previous finds of George, who has been involved in this hobby with his father since childhood. Paul, as a history buff, immediately recognized the item as a copper medieval seal. It is decorated with an image of the Virgin Mary and Child and a Latin inscription indicating its affiliation with the Batley Monastery. Returning home, father and son turned to the coroner who confirmed that the seal dates back to the beginning of the 13th century and has great historical value. The seal was later sold at auction for 4,000 pounds with the proceeds divided between George and the owner of the field. Delivery of Messages from the Afterlife Since ancient times, humanity has sought to find a way to communicate with the living who have departed from the world, which has led to the development of many methods and practices. Among them, charlatans inevitably arose, exploiting the grief of those who had lost loved ones. However, along with this, there were those who approached the issue of communication with the other world with pragmatism and rationalism. One such person was William Thomas Steed, a Victorian journalist who delved into spiritualism in London in the 1890s. Steed claimed to have psychic abilities and could receive messages from the dead through so-called automatic writing. Allegedly, his hand is capable of writing a message from the other world. One of his main interlocutors was Julia Ames, an American journalist who died in 1891. Before her death, Julia agreed with her friend Ellen that she would try to contact her from the afterlife. Ellen claimed that she saw Julia at home next to her bed but did not hear her words. This caused Ellen to turn to Steed for help and he offered to use his skills to convey her messages through automatic writing. As a result, Steed wrote the book After Death or Letters from Julia in which he published messages allegedly received from Julia. They described her experiences in the afterlife and gave the idea that the continuation of existence after death is perceived as something natural and continuous, where the soul leaves the physical body but retains its consciousness and self-awareness. After Steed's death on the Titanic in 1912, his daughter Estella claimed that a family friend, Woodman, also began receiving messages from her father via automatic letter. Woodman allegedly conveyed Steed's impressions of his post-death experiences, describing his experience of death as a strange journey to a new place filled with light and peace. These reports suggest that automatic writing may not only be the product of trance or unconscious activity, but also a real way of communicating with another dimension. Do you think people after death can somehow transfer at least some information to us in the world of the living? Write your opinion in the comments under the video. And in the previous video, I talked about alien objects that were found by archaeologists around the world. I recommend watching this video too. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone.